everybody, what's up? My name is Hazmat. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I'm here today at Reverb.com to show you guys my process. I do live techno. Welcome to D-Sequence. In the process of what I'm doing right now, basically I'm just building beats. I like to kind of create textures with my music and to kind of let the, the instruments and the drums really speak for themselves first. That's kind of my big thing. So I'm not a DJ, but when I watch DJs work, you know, you play these records and there's like a play in. So you have maybe eight bars of drums here. You have eight bars of drums here. I try to emulate that. I will mute a channel here and just have drums playing here and drums playing here. And I'll gradually fade those in the same way a DJ would if they were mixing records. Uh, it's the same process. I, these are my records. And I have different things programmed sometimes in the machines. And that's just like me going to a crate and putting on another piece of vinyl. That's kind of how it works for me. That's my process. This is the Roland JDXI. And this particular instrument is a, it's a sequencer and it does a couple other things too. It's limited because it only has four tracks, but in those tracks you have to find your own creativity to kind of give it a little vibe. We have the DJ Pioneer Toraz SP16. It's a beastly sampler. It's got some really cool stuff I like in it. And I love that Dave Smith filter. I use this to run all my loops and uh, a lot of different vocal phrases off of it. And it just bang. Good old fashioned rolling TR8. Can't go wrong with these sounds. This particular piece is the new MPC Live. It is a true beast. I really love this piece of equipment. I've never owned an MPC before, and it's really given me a way to kind of jump into the MPC world, get the workflow, and to understand how the instrument works. It's a beast. It's a beast. I really love it. And uh, I got some kind of dub techno type of thing set up for you guys, so check this out. I use the Arturia Beat Step Pro to sequence my Moog Minotaur and other things that I would, might want to send mini notes out to. And I'm bringing in the trusty Roller MC505. This is a new acquisition for me, but it's been around the world and it's an amazing piece of equipment. Um, you have some imagination, you can really make this machine pop. It's wonderful. I love it. And I always try to have, well, they, they're labeled here, rhythm, drums, and whatever, whatever parts you want to add in. But I like to just build drums, bass, keys, pads, string, and some sort of dub sound. And I'm able to do that with this particular um, piece of machinery. I can set these tracks up anywhere I like to. I like to use the 606 kit in here the most. I think it's got a really punchy kick and snare, and I love the way the hat sound in here. And it just, it just kind of bangs. I usually start with, um, from there, and I build the tracks up um, pretty much from the drums. Now I'm fading in some different elements. I got a core monopoly. This particular synthesizer is, I mean, it's just a standard. It's, it's so cold and it has four oscillators. And with this particular piece of machinery, you can just, it has a lot of power. And what I did right here was I just turned the noise level up, the noise oscillator, and just kind of bringing in some sweeps, some cool stuff like that to just kind of add a little texture to give it more levels. I always like to just continuously build levels with each track. And the show goes up and up. If you ever get a chance to check out Deep Sequence, um, what you can do is you could just come on a journey with me because I try to take you to some other places musically and sonically. And these particular type of instruments help me to do that. Now, I'm a musician, I'm a keyboardist, 
and I like to play on my shows. A lot of people don't explore that avenue, but I like to make sure that I use everything I have on stage. And playing a keyboard is something that's very natural for me. I'm not, a, I'm not a DJ at all, so I use instruments to create the music that I create. And this gives me an endless palette to, to paint with musically. The motif has been in my lineup um, since it came out. I used to work at Guitar Center, and I was one of the first people to pull these off of the truck when they pulled up. And I've been in love with it ever since. It is the most functional keyboard of all time, straight up. Yamaha Motif, this is the ES, which is also one of my favorite models of the uh, Motif. But it's just been a rock solid standard on stage for almost 20 years now. And I don't think I'll do a show without one. It's, it's just a bomb. It really works for my setup. Every now and then on the show, I like to cover songs. I like to add a completely different element to the live set that I think a lot of people are neglecting to bring. And I, I just try to add a flair to what I do. I really do try to just make sure that when you come to my show that you had a good time. So I cover tunes from now and then to keep it familiar. And I'm gonna cover one for you guys right here. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> also, I'm using a talk box, not auto-tune, but a talk box, you'll like this. <laughs> <laughs> 